What's going on guys? Today we're talking about the absolute best settings for controller on Splitgate. I have played Splitgate for almost 2000 hours now and I've tweaked my settings so many times and I've tried out so many different variations and these are the absolute best settings that I have come up with. So this is just what has worked for me. Not everyone will be the same. I don't always say, hey, use my exact settings. This is what has worked for me. This has let me get to the leaderboards and number one on both playlists. So let's just jump into my actual settings. So if you're on console, your settings might look slightly different. You might not have all of these settings, but you will have a lot of them. So I'm going to come back to the video settings and stuff for the very end. So first thing we have gameplay, obviously your input device is controller blood. I personally turn off. You'll get slightly better performance and you don't really need to see the blood kill cam. I just leave on. It's completely up to you. It normally is on highlights only now mouse and keyboard. Obviously we're skipping controller. So you have a couple options. You have invert look, you have auto sprint. So auto sprint, if you have that on, I have it off. That just means if you're holding forward, you auto sprint. And as soon as you let go, you stop. So this is completely dependent on what you want. I personally don't like this. I'm just used to not playing on this, but if you came from Call of Duty, this can be a good setting to have. I personally have that off. Vibration is a huge one. So many people play with vibration on, and if you're taking shots from an enemy, it's gonna move your stick. Now, it might help you with awareness, but there's no need for vibration. It's better to get used to having it off. It's gonna make you more accurate and more precise. And you can see on your screen, you can hear audio cues for when you're being shot and from where. You don't need that vibration if you turn that off. Now, my personal sensitivity, again, if you're on console, you can plug in a controller to get these smaller values from 0.1s instead of 0.5s. My sensitivity is extremely slow. I plan 4.8, 4.8. I like to have these even, just makes it comfortable instead of like if I'm at a diagonal, it's consistent with my right up and down and left instead of it being slightly different if I'm pushing to the side more because my horizontal is more. Now, I don't recommend playing on 4.8 like I do. I recommend playing probably somewhere between five and a half to seven and a half. I think that's really the sweet spot. The reason I play on such a low sensitivity is I'm just personally used to it from so many games of Halo, Call of Duty, whatever I was playing, I always played extremely low and it's just what I've gotten used to over the years. Now, for some people it might be better, but so many people play on such a high sense that their aim suffers and too many people are trying to just have fast sense so you can portal extremely quick. Whereas aim is still more important this game than being able to portal quick. So that is why my sensitivity is on that. Next we have acceleration. So acceleration, all that means is when your stick is all the way pushed to the side, so the max input, that is kind of the multiplier for how much faster your sensitivity goes. So if I'm barely pushing my stick, I don't have any acceleration here. But if I start holding, you can see that acceleration kick in and it moves quicker. So that's all acceleration is. If you're playing on a low sense, I recommend something a little higher. But usually anywhere between three and I like 4.5 for this is good. I personally play on three, which is the default. But again, just personal preference with all these settings. Zoom sensitivity is if my sensitivity is a five here and I zoom in, it is multiplied by whatever this value is. So for me, it's 0.78. So 78% of my sensitivity is how fast I move when I'm zoomed in. Now this I like for long range fights, especially on controller, because it's hard if you're on a higher sense to make these tiny adjustments if someone's moving like this slow without having a zoom multiplier. Zoom multiplier helps a lot. The default value here is usually 0 0.8. 0 0.78, it's about the same thing, just what I was always on. So if you wanna leave that 0.78, I think that's a good value as well. Now, inner and outer dead zone. Most people don't understand what these do. The inner dead zone is how much you have to move your stick from the actual center position to have any input register. So like right now I'm pushing on my stick, but very, very smallly and nothing registers. But if I push more, it does. So imagine a little circle around your crosshair, or I'm sorry, around your stick, and it does not move until you reach or pass that threshold for that circle. So that is inner dead zone and outer dead zone. So my inner dead zone, these are both default values. I leave these. Uh, if anything, I would lower them. But if you have stick drift, this is what you would increase to lower that. Your outer dead zone is how far you have to push to reach your max input. So for your like example, your aim acceleration to actually kick in. So if I had my outer dead zone here on zero instead of 0.1, I in theory could never reach max input and I would never have acceleration. This is, you have to imagine a circle around the outside of your stick. So let's say this is your joystick, this giant circle here. Let me get up top actually, this is actually gonna be good. So imagine this is your joystick and this white circle so this outer circle is your joystick. See this ring? This black is your dead zone. This is the zone in between 
This is your outer dead zone. Once you reach this spot, that is max input. So the higher the number, the more it moves in. So once you reach this spot on your entire joystick, which again is right here, that is when your acceleration will begin or it registers max input. Pushing it farther won't mean any more input. So that's outer dead zone. Uh, you do not want to lower that. Um, if anything, you'd raise it, but I like it on default. Now my controls, I personally use default, but I think one of the best ways you can customize binds here is by moving your joystick. So instead of your jump being A, when your jump's A and you don't play claw, you have to move your aiming thumb onto A or X or any of these buttons in order to do to use that button. Uh, again, unless you play claw. So I think it's great to remap your jump button to something like pushing in the stick, or you can do it to B and move your crouch to your stick, or just having something else where you're able to jump and aim at the same time. Because if I'm jumping, I then have to move my finger off of the aiming stick in order to be able to jump at all, unless I'm playing claw. So I think that can be a great remap for that. Again, if you have paddles, having jump, having your close portals or your nade or even your melee there would be great as well. I think portals on the bumpers is fine. That's easy to use. I don't think it's needed to be able to play successfully. So those are kind of just the key binds. Again, this is all personal preference, what you're used to. You could also, if you wanted to, change it to something like bumper jumper. But I think the right bumper and left bumper are the best binds for portaling, especially on controller. Because if you do anything else, it's just going to be more difficult unless you do paddles but even paddles i still think this would be a little bit easier but again it comes down to personal preference so that is my controls i play on all default i know some people enjoy zooming in with the stick i personally don't i think it affects my aim now let's move on to audio so audio you obviously want to have music all the way off there's a lot of audio cues like listen a portal being placed a portal hitting a wall if an enemy is standing in front of a portal you can hear the woo 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 noise so audio cues are very important and having audio you don't need like music is definitely not necessary. The announcer, I like having on full. You can maybe have this a little quieter than gameplay just so you can hear what's going on. If a hill's moved, if an enemy picks up the oddball, whatever it is. And I have ambient volume, which is just random little noise off, uh, especially in takedown. You want ambient noise off because you can hear the crowd cheer and boo and all the different things in takedown. And I don't know if it has sh in showdown, but in takedown, that's gonna affect you hearing footsteps and hearing other people. So we wanna be able to hear footsteps, portals, if someone portals behind us. So that is extremely important. So I put those two on zero and everything else is just gonna be completely your own preference because it's just voice chat. Now UI, I always wanna see my damage numbers. I wanna see if I'm getting a headshot or if I'm getting a body shot because usually the noise is about the same in game if you're getting a headshot or a body shot. So having those damage numbers is very helpful. Low ammo warning. Um, if you're a newer player and you're not used to how many weapon, how many bullets weapons have, this can be a good thing to turn on. But I personally don't like it. It clutters my screen. And when it says low ammo, I think my entire gun is out of ammo. Not that I need to reload the clip. So that is why I personally have that setting off. Now next, show sprint crosshair. This is something you should immediately turn off. It changes your crosshair. See the little triangle? It changes your crosshair where you're sprinting. And that's like, you don't want that. If you're fighting an enemy and you're sprinting and you see him, you're now aiming with a different crosshair than your actual crosshair. So that is something I think nobody should play with. Now, crosshair color. I either play with it on yellow, so all the way red, all the way green, or I'll play with it on green where I turn my yellow or my red all the way down. It's just 100% green. Green and yellow are the easiest colors for me to see personally, and I think I play the best with those. Now, when it comes to the enemy color, crosshair color, I just like this as red. I know if I can't see my crosshair, it's over them. And I'm used to it just turning red if I'm looking at someone through their own portal. Now, enemy portals are red, so you can try and change this if you feel you would play better. But I find other colors hard to see, especially on the map, because if you use any blue for any crosshair color, all these portal walls are going to be blocked. If you use red, again, it's going to disappear on the enemy. And there's a lot of red and blue on all maps, because there's usually red sides and blue sides and then purples. So I think green and yellow are great i think red is great for over the enemy but again it's going to be personal preference i just would do something that contrasts each other if you are going to change this so if you're going to do like a yellow for like an enemy crosshair color maybe a purple or something for your regular crosshair but again i think these are the two best that's what i use now my crosshairs i personally use dots on pretty much everything 
So on Railgun, I have a crosshair that is a little bit bigger. And SMG, I have a slight circle. I just found I aim better with the circle. And the Railgun has a pretty big bullet, which is why I have this crosshair. It's about as big as the bullet. And it just helps me knowing like if I'm a little bit off an enemy, if it's okay. Especially with like the charge up time and having to know, it can be hard to time it perfectly. So that is why I personally use that setting for the, the Railgun. Rocket Launcher, I have a slightly bigger one just because it's a huge radius and everything else is pretty much dots. Now, if you're newer, something that can be really beneficial is changing your crosshair on your shotgun to a diamond, just a normal diamond, because the shotgun shoots multiple bullets. And the spread, if you put the little top thing, the little top crosshair thingy on the top of someone's head, that is how the spread of the bullet actually travels. So if someone's head is right here, it's the top of this box right here, I would want my crosshair here. This is the spread of the shotgun. There's multiple pellets. And you can see this is the exact spread of it. So you know, okay, this is where my crosshair needs to be in order to hit the same spread over and over. So that is the shape of the pellets on the shotgun. It fits this crosshair perfectly. Now, I personally don't play with this. I just think it's a big crosshair. I'm not the biggest fan but it can help you out with aiming if you don't understand the bullet spread of the actual shotgun. So those are all of my crosshairs and the UI settings. Now, I also like the sniper on default. That's also a good one, but I personally like the dot on everything. Privacy, again, going to be completely up to you. Now let's do video settings. So video settings this is going to be for my PC players. If you're playing on controller on PC or just PC in general, I have a pretty powerful computer, so I run all high settings. My resolution is 100. FOV, I think, should definitely be between 95 and 103, 103 being the max. Frame rate, I play on 350. I have a 3090 and a 360 hertz monitor, which is why I play on that. V-Sync, you should always have off. This can give you bad frames and just delay your game. Now, quality. I have everything on Epic. You want to be able to see the best. A lot of people don't like the look of post-processing. It changes the image of your game a little bit. I personally like the way it looks. Shadows I have on Epic. If you have to turn something down, shadows can be something you could definitely turn down. So textures, Epic, effects, low. The reason I don't have these on Epic is if I throw a nade, look at all that blindness it gives me. It makes it way harder to see. I don't want that in my face when I'm playing. So that is why I play with effects on low or off. I have my anti-aliasing on low. And your portal quality and portal frame rate. So quality, if you have these both on low, it's kind of funny. Look how bad that frame rate is. You can tell the frames through it are way different. I don't know if you guys can actually tell, but they're very, very different. So you want to turn these up as much as possible. If you have a very, very weak computer or console, you're going to want these to still be kind of high, as high as you can. So you can see the quality, but the frame rate is still terrible. I would rather have my quality lower and my frames be the same on this. So if anything, I would turn these on, you know, medium or high at least, if you can. I'd try and get them both high, and I'd sacrifice shadows and post-processing and anti-aliasing and all of that for those. Because seeing through portals, look at how much cleaner that is. I don't know if you guys can actually tell, but it's a huge difference. So, and again, I just play on a normal res. I don't play stretch res or anything. Colorblind mode, I have off. I don't like the way it looks. I don't think it's necessary by any means uh, in really most games. I know people are like, oh, you react to yellow faster. Well, I just don't like the way it looks. It doesn't look clean, hurts my head. Uh, it's gonna be personal preference. The majority of people, unless they're colorblind in the pros, don't play with colorblind on. So again, it's gonna be completely up to you. But those are my settings and the best settings I've found for controller. Again, sensitivity and those kind of things are gonna be completely dependent on you, what you're used to. Again, faster is better, but you don't wanna to sacrifice too much aim for being able to move. I'm able to keep up with mouse and keyboard players. I'm able to play in the Pro League on a 4.8 sensitivity with three acceleration on a controller when it's mainly dominated by mouse and keyboard. So. Your game sense and other things can play a factor in that. If I had terrible game sense, I'd be getting killed from behind or getting portaled behind. But it comes down to a lot of factors and what you're used to. So those are the best settings I've found for controller. So that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you guys can catch me on Twitch. I'm streaming every single day. So hopefully I'll see you guys on Twitch and I'll see you guys later.